The Cleveland Browns did some great work this offseason, but the roster is still far from perfect. Having said that, what are some of the needs the Browns still have? Well, that's what we're going to talk about next. Let's go. What's up, Legionnaires? It's your boy Cassius, welcoming everyone back to the Sports Sanctuary, where we talk about all things sports all the time. As you can tell from the title on today's video, we're going to be talking about three things that the Browns still need to address on their roster. But before we get into all of that, if you haven't done so already, please do me a favor. If you want to become a Sports Sanctuary Legionnaire, go subscribe to the channel so you can get all of the weekly sports content that I put out. Turn on your notifications so that you can get alerted every single time I upload new content to the channel. And if you got the time, do me a favor, drop a thumbs up on the video because it helps the channel grow through the YouTube algorithms and all that good stuff. You know how it goes. Appreciate it. Also, don't forget, I am hosting a bunch of fantasy football leagues this year still, so I can try to get to know a lot more of you guys outside of YouTube. I think it's going to be a blast, so if you're interested in that, the link will be down below in the description. But now that we got all of that stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into today's topic because I'm sure you guys are ready to get past all this bullshit. <laughs> At this point, I'm sure a lot of fans are finding it hard to look at the Cleveland Browns roster and see any major needs that the team has at all. And I get it. General Manager Andrew Barry has absolutely done a fabulous job filling a lot of the team's holes during this offseason through both free agency and the 2021 NFL Draft. This is evident through additions such as Jadavian Clowney, JJ3, and as well as some other great role players such as slot cornerback, cornerback Troy Hill and linebacker Anthony Walker. Then, of course, in the draft, Andrew Barry completed the whole uh, sweep of the offseason with the addition of Greg Newsom II, Jeremiah Awusu Kormoa, who was the steal of the draft, in my opinion, and many other rookies who can come in and contribute like uh, Anthony Schwartz, Tommy Togiai, Tony Fields II, etc. Man, there's a lot of people with seconds and thirds on the team. <laughs> anyway, having said all that, like I said earlier in this video, no roster is perfect. And in my humble opinion, honest opinion and again it's only my opinion there are at least three areas where the browns could stand to add just a little bit more depth to help them be successful in 2021 and beginning with number three on the list of biggest needs that the browns still need to address i have the interior offensive line depth one of the moves barry made to address this was in the draft when he added james Hutz hudson in the fourth round and believe it or not I actually think that uh, he'll help the inside O-line with his ability to play swing tackle that will free up Chris Hubbard to play inside. And, you know, Hubbard proved last year that he can still fill in at guard and the team won't miss a beat. But unfortunately, his season, meaning Chris Hubbard, ended in a season-ending dislocated knee with torn ligaments. And on top of that, unfortunately, Hubbard has also been one of the worst graded guards in terms of pass blocking and run blocking in the NFL over the last three or four years, according to Pro Football Focus. And he's on the fourth year of a big contract, too. So knowing all that, keep in mind that his injury will be a hard one to bounce back from since he's also 30 years old. That means he probably won't be back at 100% as quickly as he would like. And it's also likely a safe bet that he will begin the season on the PUP list or the physically unable to perform list as he continues to rehab from an injury that happened very late in the 2020 season. And that's why I put interior line depth here at number three on this list. Moving on to number two on this list of needs that the Browns still need to address, I have cornerback depth. And to me, this pick is one that's a little more interesting to figure out in terms of this list. Because as it stands right now, the Browns are fine at quarterback on paper. They have Denzel Ward, they have Greg Newsom II as their primary starters out on the outside, and then they have Troy Hill, who's one of the best slot corners in the game, working the slot. Which means you have Greedy Williams, who will get pushed all the way down to number four on the depth chart, which is pretty good depth, in all honesty. Having Greedy as your fourth corner 
is some of the best depth in the entire NFL, and that's not even up for debate. The problem for me is that three of those four primary cornerbacks all have significant injury concerns. Ward missed, has missed 11 games in the three seasons he's played, whereas Newsom also missed 14 games during his college career while appearing in 17 during his time at Northwestern. Then there's also Williams, who missed 20 games in two seasons, including all of 2020 with a nerve injury in his shoulder, which might mean he might never, ever be 100% if he ever gets back to it. And at the moment, if any of them goes down, the only replacement Cleveland has is second-year player A.J. Green, on one hand, who has been reported to have uh, the Cleveland defensive staff behind him. You know, they kind of have faith in him. But something tells me, even though they're fond of him, it's hard to imagine that they would feel confident starting him in a game to play against teams number one and number one top receivers, which will most likely happen with all of the injury histories that we're, we're, we're looking at right here on our cornerback. So with the durability being a huge concern for me at this position, I had to put cornerback depth here at number two. And finally, coming in at number one on this list of biggest needs the Browns need to address, I have the defensive edge depth. And just like with the cornerback depth at number two, this selection isn't nearly as much as, much as about, about talent as it is about durability. As it stands now, Cleveland has Miles Garrett on one side who is an absolute stud, an absolute monster, and a former num number one pick. He's been a player in the conversation for the NFL Defensive Player of the Year a couple times, and with some additions around him, meaning he might get fewer double teams, he should be able to be right back in the Defensive Player of the Year discussion for 2021, especially if he joins the 20 sack club like I expect him to this year. Of course, across from him will be another former number one overall pick in Jadavian Clowney, who Andrew Barry brought in through free agency and signed to a one-year deal so he can help free up pressure for Miles, or maybe get some pressure on Miles that frees him up which in theory will be superlative and awesome because Clowney has never had his talent as a run stopper question. But at the same time, it's no secret at this point in his career that he seems to always get deemed up and have injuries. Those injuries also include last season when he missed eight games and the playoffs for the Tennessee Titans, the team that signed him despite the Browns' efforts to bring him in and sign him a season ago for more money, which I might want to add, I took kind of personally when they signed him this year, which I guess in hindsight worked out great for the Browns, but still. And right now, if Miles or Jadavian miss any times, the replacement for them would be Tack McKinley, who was also a first round pick as well, although later in the first round than the other two. He has also missed time, and he's also been through several teams in 2020, apparently due to failed physicals. And in my opinion, that's bad if we have to depend on Tack McKinley to fill in, because I don't honestly expect much from Tack in, in the way of impact like Andrew Barry does. He's taken a, a, a deal with a lot of upside, but not a lot of downside. He could perform, he could not perform. But to me, if Tack McKinley is on the field a lot this season, there's something that's going terribly wrong. Behind him, there's a, another perceived drop off in talent with Porter Gustin, Curtis Weaver, and Joe Jackson all lined up. But that's a significant drop off from the, the starting line that we have. So on one hand, if Miles and Jadavian stay healthy, the Browns will have the best defensive end grouping in the NFL. But if either of them misses time and Tack doesn't rebound like Andrew Barry hopes he will, then we will be relying on second string players to fill in up front. And that's not a good look for me. So because of that, I'm putting defensive line in depth here at number one on this list as something the Browns need to address for 2021. But what do you guys think? Do you think this list makes some valid points and observations or do you think I'm just nitpicking because there's nothing else to talk about? <laughs> Let me know in the comment section down below and let's talk uh, Cleveland Browns football, baby. And as always, if you enjoyed this channel, uh, if you enjoyed this video, I'm sorry, and you want to become a Sports Sanctuary Legionnaire, do me a favor, go subscribe to the channel uh, to get more weekly sports content. Turn on your notifications so you can get alerted every time I upload new content to this channel. Uh, hit that thumbs up because it helps the video grow. And share the video with your friends on social media for the same exact reasons. I really appreciate it. Also, before I go, don't forget, Fantasy Football League still going on. As long as people want to join them, I'll keep making them. The link for it will be in the description down below. I hope to see you guys there. It's going to be a blast. 
But other than that, I want to thank you guys for coming out today and joining me again in the Sports Sanctuary. Take care of yourself. Stay blessed. Stay out of trouble. And I'm going to see you guys next time. Peace.